In this video, I am going to cover the four types of life insurance that you need to understand as a service member. Now for each type of insurance, I will cover what it is, when you might need it, pros, cons, and my ultimate thoughts on how I would utilize them or not utilize them. Now I will remain objective throughout the review, but you will notice that I definitely have some preferences as we get to the my thoughts section on each type of insurance, and I'm gonna break that down for you and why that is. Also, it should be noted that I am not a licensed insurance broker. However, I actually think that's an advantage because that means I'm not incentivized by a commission to push a certain type of insurance in your direction. Maestro, cue the intro. Life insurance is a great way to ensure your loved ones will be taken care of in the event of an untimely death on your part. That being said, if you mind your finances and invest intelligently, you should not need life insurance for your entire life. While there are some benefits to having life insurance at age 80, I would much prefer to have my finances in order and not be relying on life insurance to take care of my family after age 60. So the first life insurance that we're gonna talk about is Service Members Group Life Insurance, or the SGLI, which really should be fairly familiar to anyone who has ever served in the military. The SGLI offers low-cost term life insurance to eligible service members when you might use it while on active duty. This is the $400,000 life insurance that you receive upon entering the military. All right, so some pros. It's a great plan for service members. Coverage up to $400,000 in $50,000 increments. Now, 120 days of free coverage from the date you leave the military. There's also extension of free coverage for up to two years if you're totally disabled when you leave the military. There's part-time coverage if you're a reserve member who doesn't qualify for full-time coverage and you only pay $3 a month for every $50,000 in coverage, which is extremely affordable. All right, some cons. The biggest con I have with the SGLI is that your insurance ends soon after you exit the military. So after 120 days to two years, you will either have no life insurance or need to be accepted into a new policy. Uh, the only other con is that with the SGLI, if you don't smash the like button on this video, uh, it will wish it had life insurance. Yeah, that was really corny. But hey, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, tells YouTube that this is a useful video. All right, my thoughts is just take the full $400,000 for the SGLI benefit. You are in a dangerous occupation and $25 a month is incredibly affordable to be able to give your loved ones 400 grand if you pass away. Now the next is the Veterans Group Life Insurance or VGLI. So what it is, the VGLI allows you to keep your life insurance coverage after you leave the military for as long as you continue to pay the premiums. So this is similar to the SGLI coverage, but after you exit the military. So when you might use it. You can apply for VGLI within one year and 120 days from your discharge for up to the amount of coverage you had through the SGLI, which is why you should do the full amount. You can apply through the Office of Service Members Group Life Insurance, or OSGLI, using the Prudential website, which I'll put a link down below to apply through. Some pros to this coverage coverage up to 400 grand based on the amount of SGLI coverage that you had while in the military. You can also increase your coverage by $25,000 every five years until you hit that $400,000 mark or you're 60 years old. Now, if you sign up within 240 days of leaving the military, you will not need to prove you're in good health, which is useful because some of us break while we're in the military, let's be honest. Now, cons, if you sign up after the 240 day period, you will need to submit evidence that you're still in good health, which just means, you know, it's more difficult. Uh, the VGLI premium rates are based on your age and the amount of insurance coverage you want, which means that your insurance costs will increase as you get older, which, you know, because of this, the VGLI might make sense immediately after exiting the military, but it could get costly as you get older. For example, a $400,000 worth of coverage with the, the lowest monthly premium is $32 for a veteran age 29 and below, but for the same amount of coverage, the 400,000, the highest monthly premium is $1,840 a month for veterans 75 and older, which is a lot for life insurance. You shouldn't need life insurance at 75 anyway. So my thoughts, if you're young and have medical conditions that would make your, uh, you an expense, expensive to insure or uninsurable through most life insurance policies, definitely move into the VGLI when, in, within that period where you don't need a medical inspection. If you're healthy, 
absolutely look into a term life insurance policy elsewhere because I, like I'm paying just $40 a month for a policy and it's not going to go up to $1,800 otherwise as I get older. So that's about the same cost as the VGLI would be for my age range. And I have $500,000, which is, you know, $100,000 more, but it's not going to increase as I get older. So it, it's, yeah, it's good. Now the VGLI will get expensive as you age and I would probably not recommend it unless you have medical conditions that other insurance won't Accept. So I already mentioned that, but just want to reiterate that. That's my thoughts. The next is term life insurance. Now, what it is, term life insurance is a type of life insurance that guarantees payment of a stated death benefit if the covered person dies during a specified term. After that term expires, policyholder can renew it for another term, convert it to permanent coverage, or you just terminate it, then you don't get anything. Uh, when you might use it. Really, you can use term life insurance at any time provided that your health allows you to be insured. So the younger and healthier you are when applying for a policy, the lower your monthly premiums will be. All right, some pros for term life insurance. Term life insurance is the most affordable coverage type. My new policy is good for 30 years at, with $500,000 in coverage and it only costs, I said it costs less than $40, $40 a month, but actually, uh, yeah, well, never mind. Yeah, $40 a month, I don't know what I'm doing. So results will vary, but you could get even better coverage. My wife did, and she's older than I am. So most terms expire before the company has to pay a death benefit, so hopefully you'll never need this policy. Basically, they're betting that you'll, die, you'll, you'll outlive the policy. Now, it covers you long enough to get your finances and retirement squared away, and then after that, you shouldn't need a policy because you're going to watch the rest of my videos and you're going to have your retirement taken care of. It's great for young people with children in order to ensure that the children are taken care of in the unlikely event of an early death for the parents. All right, so it's straightforward and easy to understand, which I really like about term life policies. All right, some cons. If you are diagnosed with a terminal illness during the first policy term, you most likely won't be eligible to renew the policy after it expires. So some, some policies do offer guaranteed reinsurability, but this usually makes the original policy more expensive. But when you renew or convert this policy, you will be older, which means that your premiums will most likely be higher due to age or medical conditions. All right, it isn't easy to predict what your life will look like in 20 to 30 years and therefore how long a term you should get coverage for. So that's kind of a downside. All right, it doesn't build capital like the whole life insurance does, but we'll get to that in a minute. Term life insurance is, un in is inflexible. The term and the death benefit are generally set in stone, so you can't really play with them that much. Now, my thoughts. Term life is a great way to ensure that you are insured or covered until retirement. My wife and I both have term life policies in place until we are 60. We are confident that we continue to invest, that there will be absolutely no need for life insurance after the age of 60 for either of us, right? Like, I'm going to make sure she's taken care of. I'm going to make sure I'm taken care of. We'll be good. She'll make sure I'm taken care of, whatever. Term life insurance is so much more affordable than whole life insurance, like, like 10 to 15 times more affordable. And you can then take that and invest the difference to build wealth, which I like. So I recommend that you lock in a whole, uh, a term life insurance policy about a year before you exit the military. That way, any medical issues you are going to bring up during your VA claim, they won't be documented yet, which means that you'll be much more insurable, which is what I just did. I just locked in term life insurance policy and I've got about a year until I EAS or go reserves. So that way, if you claim a lot of medical issues on your VA claim, you will be much more expensive to insure and you really don't want to do that until after you've got insurance. So this isn't to say that you shouldn't claim medical issues on your claim. You absolutely should, but you should, however, secure life insurance six to 12 months before that, even though you still have the SGLI to ensure that you get a less expensive monthly premium. Now, whole life insurance. All right, what it is. Whole life insurance provides coverage for the remainder of the insured's life. In addition to providing a death benefit, whole life also contains a savings component where you may build cash value over time. Whole life is also known as traditional or permanent life insurance. And so, you know, whatever. When you might use it. You can use whole life insurance at any time, provided that your health allows you to be insured. The younger and healthier you are when applying for a policy, the lower your monthly premiums will be, just like every other coverage. Some of the pros for whole life are that it lasts for a lifetime rather than a agreed upon term. Now, provided you maintain the premium payments, whole life insurance will pay your death benefit without an expiration or term date. It provides a savings component where cash can build up over time. You may have even heard of that referred to as like infinite banking. This savings component can be invested and the policyholder can access this money while alive 
by withdrawing or borrowing against the cash value of the life insurance. They are fixed premiums and you never have to recertify your health or worry about premiums increasing, no matter what. Now there are tax advantages for the money invested in cash value whole life insurance policies. That's another pro. All right, cons. Extremely, extremely, extremely expensive when compared to term life. As a personal example, my wife and I took out whole life and policies in 2016 when we didn't really know what we were doing. Her policy cost around $50 a month and insured her for a whopping $50,000. Now, fast forward to 2020, so we're older, and we switched to term life now that we have done our own research instead of just listening to a salesman. Her new policy costs around $20 a month, so $30 less, and covers her for $500,000 until she's 60, so 10 times as much insurance. So we received 10 times the insurance coverage for less than half the monthly premium. Oh, and the cash value of her account after four years and over $2,500 in premiums was like $400. Not that great. Now, it takes a long time for you to build up cash value in your account unless you super fund it and just dump a lot of cash in it at once. So it will take years to build up the cash value as I just showed you, which is, you know, whatever. Uh, the account is mediocre investment returns at best. You might not lose money, but mediocre. So very complicated and difficult to understand. One of the biggest turnoffs for me about whole life insurance and infinite banking, as it is called when you borrow money from the cash value of your life insurance and da da da, is that nobody has ever been able to explain it to me concisely. It just always seems so complicated. So I figure if a concept is so complex that the professionals can't break it down, I don't want to use it as an investment strategy. I like simple and stress-free investing. The insurance industry does not have a fiduciary responsibility to look out for your best interests. So that's true with everything. But here's the kicker. The commissions for whole life insurance sales are much larger. Like we're talking, I don't know, 10 to 15 times larger because it's an annual premium of the, and that's how much more they cost. So they're incentivized to push whole life insurance. Also, no insurance brokerage has ever been honest with me about the difference in commission between term and whole life. Every fee only financial advisor I've ever talked to though has recommended term life. So my thoughts, whole life insurance is complicated, expensive, and unnecessary. I would much rather have a policy that costs 10% of what whole life policy or less might cost and then invest the difference. Whole life insurance and the infinite banking concept seem like they could be smart if, you, if you're A, able to super fund it, meaning like just dump a bunch of cash in uh, so you have money, and, or B, if you have cash to burn and you wanna receive some tax benefits on it. So there's some benefits there, but I don't think it's great for building wealth. I think it's good if you're already wealthy. So I would also argue that if you are well enough off that you could super fund a whole life insurance policy, you probably don't need life insurance to begin with, you might do better just leaving it in the stock market. So you would theoretically be able to provide for your family without having an expensive insurance policy, which is just kind of my thoughts on it. Now, I might use it someday, but it's where I stand right now. So I'm not a huge fan of whole life insurance policies because again, they're expensive and insurance brokers are highly incentivized to push whole life, which means it's extremely lucrative for the company, which means there's fees and it's just really hard to understand, like get to the bottom of all this. So they're also very complicated, which I've mentioned, I think you can just do much better by investing the money left over from the smaller premiums of term life insurance or insurance. Now I've mentioned that before, but so my friend Robert Farrington wrote an article that about uh, that broke the term versus whole life debate down pretty simple and it really helped solidify my decision. A lot of the articles you see written about this are companies that provide whole life insurance, which means that they're, again, they're less objective, they're incentivized. So it's on the college investor and I'm gonna link down below to it. Definitely check it out. I know kind of hit on whole life there, but there are some companies out there, including even military companies that are just, they're talking about how whole life is the best investment you can ever have. And I mean, some of these people, they don't even own whole life. Like I've had people tell me that whole life insurance is the best thing ever. And then I go and talk to them about their policy and they're like, well, you know, I haven't got it yet. Well, if it's such a great investment vehicle, why don't you own one yet? If it's that great, then you shouldn't have to wait, right? It just seems weird. And then it's just complicated and there's always curmuddled fees and people won't even talk to you about it like in a Facebook group. They want to pull you offline and talk to you about it somewhere else. It just all seems kind of smoke and mirrors and fishy. Some of the best financial guys that I know who've been at this for the longest time just say, 
it's complex. Why worry about it? Do term, invest the difference, you'll be just fine. Whole life has some benefits, like if you have a, a bad, you know, if you come up with a crazy illness or if you have a bad illness or, or, or hereditary or whatever, like if it's something you don't think you're gonna be insurable for, or you don't know, like there's, there's situations where it works or if you have money, you need to, you know, I mentioned a lot of that, just be cautious and the, don't, no matter what, no matter what, don't take your thrift savings plan and roll it into a whole life policy. That is like the worst thing you could ever do. And I've seen people say, liquidate your TSP and roll it into whole life. No, that's bullshit. I think term, like whole life from what I've seen, they offer like 5% interest. And it's, yeah, it's guaranteed, so you're not gonna lose money. The stock market has averaged seven or 8% annually for its existence. That's two or 3% better with less fees and that's huge to me. And that means the TSP is earning more and has better tax advantages in the Roth IRA than if you take the penalty and roll it into whole life. So don't get me super crazy on this, but if somebody's trying to sell you on whole life, come talk to me. I'll point you in the direction of some buddies of mine who will shoot straight with you and they're not incentivized at all. And they're just brilliant, brilliant people. So let me know, reach out to me here, Instagram, wherever. If you didn't already smash that like button, please do and have a great day.